Good morning and welcome to the Universalist Unitarian Church of Haverhill. Welcome to Sally and perhaps Sally would like to light our chalice and lead us in our unison affirmation. Good morning everyone. I'm Sally Lieberman and my pronouns are she and her. I'm joining you from the community meal kitchen in our sibling church in Haverhill this morning. And I thank Holly Getz for lighting our chalice in Reading. And I'll light a chalice for us in our shared community with our friends in Haverhill. And ask you to join me in our chalice lighting words. We are Unitarian Universalists, a church of open mind, loving hearts, and helping hands. I'm here in the community meal kitchen where food is served most days of the week. Food and community to folks who come in from the neighborhood and from the city. We're making soup today that will be served in the drop-in center tomorrow morning. Thank you, Sally. I'm Claire Fortune Lad. I'm the Director of Religious Education here at UUCH. And this morning is extra special because Sally used to be the Director of Religious Education here at UUCH. I bet a bunch of you remember her well. And I forgot to say that my pronouns are she and her. So we are now going to tell an old folk tale that many of you know well called Stone Soup. And I'll be telling the story while Sally makes real stone soup. Let's see what we have here. I wonder what this could be. And I wonder what this could be. It looks like a path leading somewhere, doesn't it? Once there was a traveler who walked down the path. As he walked, he could see that the fields around the path were brown and dry. As he continued walking, he came to a village. He noticed that no one was outside playing in this village. Everyone was inside their house. The traveler felt hungry so he went to the first house and he asked if they had any food. The people in the first house said they did not have any food because the fields were brown and dry. So the traveler went to the next house and asked if the people inside had any food. The people said they did not have any food because the fields were brown and dry. And so the traveler went to the third house and asked if the people in the third house had any food, but they said they did not because the fields were brown and dry. And so the traveler went to the middle of town and said, good people, since you have no food to share, I will have to make stone soup. The people came out of their houses to see what the traveler was doing. He pulled a gigantic pot out of his bag and he lit a fire around it and he poured water into it. And then he unwrapped a stone 
and dropped it into the water. Hmm. This stone soup would taste a lot better if we had some cabbage to put into it. One of the villagers said, I might have some cabbage in my house. So she went, and when she came back, she had a gigantic cabbage to put in the pot. Hmm, said the traveler. If only we had some carrots and potatoes. Another villager said, I think I have a carrot or two. And he came back with three orange carrots and put them into the pot. His neighbor found two potatoes and brought them to the center of the village to put in the pot. Mmm, this is starting to smell really good, said the traveler. But you know, the best stone soup I've ever had had some nice salt beef in it. And once we put the salt beef in, it was fit for royalty. And so, some of the villagers found some salt beef. And others came back from their houses with mushrooms. <clears throat> Soon there were even some tomatoes in the village to put into the soup. And what do you know? Onions to really help with the flavor. They even found a yellow pepper and chopped it up and threw it in. Hmm. By the time they were finished, they had enough food for a huge feast in the village. They came together and shared their meal as a community. I wonder where you are in this story. I wonder why the villagers said they had no food to share. I wonder why the villagers shared their food by adding it to the stone soup. I wonder where the spirit of love and mystery might be in this story. Sally's been working hard cooking, hasn't she? She's chopping and dumping and stirring. And I think it might be time for us to bless our soup. What do you think, Sally? Joining together in community today, we have made soup for the stone in the center, a soup to be warm and to feed hungry people, hungry souls tomorrow morning. At 8 a.m., the drop-in center will open and folks will find work, coffee, cereal, and our soup. Let us join our hearts and our minds and hope that our intention of sharing community, love, and nourishment is received by those who visit here tomorrow. Blessed be and amen. 
Thank you, Sally, for being with us today. And thank you for extinguishing our chalice while we say our extinguishing words. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Thank you, Reading friends, for joining us. And I hope everyone has a great afternoon. Thank you, Claire.